there you go, guys. So, um, yep, yeah, those again. Um, we've got here a very basic analog uh, telephone exchange. This was removed from a customer's uh, premises quite some time ago. Um, to be honest, I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was quite some time ago. And um, this was not really working well. Um, there was a lot of buzz present on it. There were problems with the lines not hanging up. Uh, a lot of things that are common when you're trying to do clever things with analog uh, phone lines. And um, we replaced it with an IP-based system. And this got thrown in a box on the, uh, well, it might be useful one day sort of collection. Um, it's never been used anymore. Uh, I just couldn't bring myself to use it. Um, it did get opened some time ago. Uh, there are no screws in the bottom of it. Uh, had a quick look at it and decided, no, no use. And it got thrown in a box. And um, tidying up the other day, I found it. So it's going to be a quick tear down for your viewing pleasure. There are no screws in it. They've already long gone. So we won't be doing much with that. Um, quick look at what we've got on the back of this let's zoom you down so nothing really exciting here we have a figure of eight uh, power input i'm not going to power this up because there's absolutely no point we have two mark three ports marked co these are the um, external analog lines and then we have eight here which are your phones this uses analog phones not digital phones so um Let's square you up. This uses analog phones, not digital phones, so you can just use your run of the mill, um, cheap, brought from Argos or wherever phones with it. And I believe I have memories of BT actually selling something similar with their own branding on it, which actually was quite cool, worked really well, but this really didn't. So let's have a quick look inside this. I was sure there were no screws in here. Nope, I have helpfully put one screw back in. So we can already see, looking underneath this, we have a transformer, so we're not using switch mode here. Let's get this back here and square it up. There we go. And pop, no, oh, come on. There we go. Pop the lid off. We've got a connector for the LEDs here. And there we go. Um, but is literally just a circuit board with a couple of LEDs on. I will take that off and show you because the plastic will be going in our plastic bin and the PCBs will be going in our PCB bin. So if I do it now, I don't have to do it later and screws can go and screw it up. So yeah, we've just got the four LEDs on there with provision for another one that's not used. That other one would be driven from the same as the power LED so that's just obviously another provision for a different power LED. So what have we got here? Um, lots and lots of relays. So you've got relays here for each one of the um, lines. These will be for the controlling the uh, loop. Uh, if you're not aware telephone lines work on a current loop system um, and there are various things you can do to that loop to signal what's going on. We've got a set of line relays here and another set of relays above. Now, I can't remember how this system works, but what's quite common on these is in the default state with these relays being de-energized, they will normally loop through to the first one or first three of the um, phones to give you a failover in case power supply fails. And let's face it, the way this, built, this is built... It wouldn't be too surprising if it did just die. Um, what else have we got in here? Not a lot, really. So I don't think we're doing anything special. I think we are literally just switching lines with this. So each one of these strips here is a line interface. You can see that there are three identical strips here. Um, we have a not fitted jack down here which is probably going to be hold music. Uh, we have a whole load of not fitted stuff up here. I can't really guess on that. And I'll show you, you can see them actually quite well. I won't show you them closer. We've got a couple of hybrids here. Um, not sure what they'd be. We could be doing ring generation or just general tone generation here. Um, we've got 
these four chips that apparently make it all work. Now, um, bear with me. Let me just uh, grab some information and we'll see what those actually are. Right, so we've done a bit of looking up. Um, I've managed to replace my, misplace my plastic pointy stick, so um, carbohydrate phone time. So we've had a quick poke around here and a look at what chips we've got in. And um, uh, yeah, um, there's more design limitations to this that uh, we found. So we have the most boring chip of the lot down here. This is an LS244. This is just a buffer of some description. Um, it is a buffer. I don't know what it's being used for. Um, and then we have two DTMF decoders here. We have a 16 by 8 or 8 by 16 switch array. And we have a microcontroller here. Now, I don't remember how this works. So there could be a limitation here. Now, the way I suspect this would work is you'll pick up an extension. Um, you'll get a dial tone generated, which I suspect is from one of these. We'll take the board out and have a look in a minute. Um, the system should then be listening for you to do something with the keypad of your phone. And what I suspect happens is this multiplexer switch is the output of your phone to one of these to listen. Um which potentially causes a problem here because these only handle one channel each. So if someone picks up the next line, they're going to get this chip. I'm making assumptions here. Uh, at which point, if anyone picks up any of these lines, they can't do anything. Um, or they certainly can't make any calls. Um, what I'm guessing will happen is you'll dial your number. Um, the micro will take care of that. Um, I suspect all we're doing here is listening for possibly a leading nine or something similar and then extension numbers um, my guess is if it sees the leading nine then you are switched directly to the first available telephone line and this comes out of the system at which point if number three has picked up the phone the multiplexer will switch that one into the line three this is all supposition um, the system really didn't work very well so um I didn't really play with it that much. I have just noticed that here, all these standoffs go through the board except for the end. And on the end, we've got little bits of board with holes drilled in them to make the case fit properly. Bulgy, but it works. Um, so let's pop this out. I did also spot this in the transformer lead. Um, we have an inline fuse holder there. Uh, we've also got a gaping hole in here. If you, where are you? Yeah, we've also got a gaping hole in here, and that's quite obviously designed to take a switch. So let's take this apart a little more. Again, as I said in other videos, this is now scrap. This will be recycled. So actually, completely ripping this apart does actually help me out a little. So we've got those out there. Transformer comes out. Um, that just tells us that it's an AC220 volt transformer. So this is no use outside the United Kingdom or out of U Europe, Australia. I think most of the world would be able to use that. I'm not sure 100% where other than North America is stuck with 110 Pull that out, pull that out, and this should all hopefully come out now. Yes, it does. So there's the power supply, uh, there's the main board. That doesn't come out, and this is one of those I'm hoping that they really haven't done what I think they have moments. But it looks really. So that, where are you? We were just hot snotted in. That's all. We were just hot snotted in. That's all that held that in. Just not even very good hot snot. Seriously, there was no attempt made to hold that in. Right, it's 
my centers moved again so what have we got here let's just focus this down so we can't see anything new here we have got up here it's quite difficult to tell on this tiny screen whether this is focused or not you've got another relay here and then something marked lcck which is tied into that relay so whatever this is is tied into that relay i'm beginning to suspect so we've got a so we've got a jack here this comes up the side of the board here this goes into the multiplexer so yeah we've got a provision here for hold music um what else have we got we've got this has this gone out of focus again We've got this here, which appears to be LEDs to show which lines are in use. So what are these hybrids doing? That goes over to there, which goes over to there, which goes over to there. Um, that doesn't give, a, give us a lot of clue about what that does. So that's obviously... I don't know if you'll see it on the video, but that's obviously a supply pin of some kind. I honestly could not guess as to what that hybrid is doing. When I say hybrid, it's just a blob on a board. And to be fair... This one doesn't look like it's doing much more either if we look on the back if i bring you right up and find you you can see that we've actually only got one track on the bottom and i don't think you'll see it that much better but there's really not much going on down here either so really no idea what this is about but there you go anyway, what's happening here at a most basic level, drop you on the floor again, or drop it on the floor, it's stuck in a carpet. So at a most basic level what's coming happening is an incoming call is coming in, it goes through the line circuit, it gets stepped down to a sensible voltage, it goes to the multiplexer, and then a strategy determined by this will ring the extensions. Now thinking about it, one of these must be a ring generator because this is going to put you over your line load if you try to ring all these phones. So there's possibly ring regeneration going on there. Um, an outbound call is going to go from the extension to the uh, multiplexer. From the multiplexer, it's going to be connected to the one of the DTMF decoders. And we'll have a ring or dial tone generation going on there. Um, if you are going internal, you'll dial your number. It's going to go through there and back out the line circuit off to the other phone. If you're going through an outside line, it's going to switch you then to the appropriate outside line when it sees a 9 and send your call out. It's very basic. A lot of systems um, based on digital phone exchanges convert your voice to PCM, um, which allows more flexibility in how it's dealt with. Um, if you can imagine trying, this is just eight lines. We've got an eight by 16 switch here. Um, if we want to get a 16, you're going to need another eight by 16 switch. And then you're going to need, sorry, multiplexer. And then you're going to need to multiplex that multiplexer and re redo all of this. So with a lot of the digital exchanges, it's not done this way. And if you hold on just one second, so in comparison, this is a digital exchange line card. And you can see down here, we've got our eight lines here. They are going through the same rough sort of setup as we saw on the other one. Um, but then again, we've lost a lot of the analog side because what's coming through here is PCM digital signals. Um, 
we don't need to worry so much about generating dial tones here the correct signals for the phone or everything that's all been taken care of at the digital phone end rather than us having to do it and then we just have PCM data streams now that are handled by fairly run-of-the-mill chips um, and we it's easier to switch a PCM data stream in software and you can then start doing things like extracting your DTMF in software and things like that um, that's why um, Digital phone systems, analog phone systems are fundamentally incompatible um, and why they require specialist phones. Each vendor does have their own version of these protocols normally, so you can't mix and match. This is out of an older Nortel system. Um, this is actually the main board, so this is the entire exchange. Um, we've got a cold fire processor here. I have no idea what that is. We have RAM, ROM, we have an SD card here. Um, we have, I believe, two ISDN inputs here. We have the line circuitry for the ISDN. Again, if you look at the ISDN section, which is just this here, and each of these ISDN, which is primarily digital signaling, is again a lot simpler than dealing with analog lines. If you've looked at an old modem, again, you will recognize all of what was going on here. It's the same stuff that modems have to do. So anyway, um, this will probably get um, pulled apart now and um, I will probably have the DTMF decoders and the multiplexer off of it. Um, there is very little point in taking that micro. I don't deal with anything like that. Um, the relays, don't know, unknown age. I am not short of relays, much higher quality ones than this. Um, the caps now this did have a problem with noise and if we have a look at the caps these are probably unknown specials CA maybe um, we have just looking down here line VDD a1, A2, B1, G, B2. So there are multiple windings on that transformer, which we know. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there is enough there for a full bridge rectifier on each. So they weren't cheaping out there. But it's more likely that these caps aren't in great shape, to be honest. But we will never know. Anyway, that one is dead. Uh, 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 where are we? I will sort the camera rotation out in a minute because this is annoying me. Um, but yes, this is now dead. It's not going to be used. I will pull that. I will pull those two. Um, and yeah, I think this will then go um, off to the graveyard for recycling.